Hello and welcome to my Hoover Crow. My name is Crispina. I use she, her pronouns and I am coming to you from Sacramento, California. I this last weekend went to a local knitting guild's yarn auction um, and it was such a fun experience and I just wanted to share with you all of the yarn that I acquired at that yarn auction. It's a lot as you probably saw in the thumbnail. Um, I recently had a color seasonal color analysis uh, done and I learned that I am a light spring. I previously thought that I was a light summer but also kind of just bought yarn that I thought was nice and so I recently went through and, and um, de-stashed a lot of yarn. So I had some openings in my stash and I sure filled them. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I just wanted to, if, the, if you are like not into watching like acquisitions of yarn, this is not the video for you. I'm literally just going to show you all of the yarn I bought. Um, it was such a good deal. If you watch this channel, you know I love to like thrift yarn and find, like I've, I'm not afraid of discontinued yarns that I'm finding at thrift stores and stuff. I don't like to, you know, get make those into beautiful projects. So, um, there was a lot, it, it was a thrifty experience. Uh, so all told I spent just under $200, which I acknowledge is a lot of money to spend on yarn. Um, but if you've gone yarn shopping, <laughs> then you know, yarn's expensive. <laughs> so when I have the opportunity to buy it, um, for a very steep discount, I usually jump on that opportunity. And now I was able to go with my um, color swatch and see the yarn in person. Uh, and that was great to just like rule out a lot of stuff and, and also pick up some things that I probably would not have bought prior to knowing uh, which colors look the best on me. So, yeah, so I told you I spent $200 on the yarn and um, the value of all of the yarn I bought uh, is about 1000 give or take. I've just, it's an estimate. So I got $1,000 worth of yarn for $200. I'm pretty happy with that. So without further ado, I am going to show you the yarn. So <laughs> I told you it was a lot. Um, this is everything that I got. Um, I am going to just put my like colors up on the screen. Uh, I was thinking about like, you know, getting my swatch and comparing all the yarn colors with the swatch, but that, that sounded like a lot of work. So I'm just going to have it up so you can kind of see. Um, not everything, everything is like ideal for me, but I was buying kind of, um, the yarns were bundled in like, so there would be like, you know, five of this kind of yarn and like three of this one and this uh, like together, sold together in a bundle. So, um, for some of those bundles, I was, um, going for a particular yarn and some other ones rode along. Um, they are going to stay in my stash for now. If I end up not using them and de-stashing them later, you know, it was still a very good deal <laughs> to buy the yarn just for the ones that I was first drawn to. Okay. So I said without further ado, and then I made some further ado, but I'm going to start, um, from the heaviest weight yarn and then go down from there. So first off I have this, um, it is five skeins of, um, 
what are you? Patton's Classic Wool Merino. And this was an exciting find for me because I had a gift card to a thrift store and I ha it would like expired like at the end of the month. And so I had to use it. And one of the things I bought was three skeins of, of well, six skeins of this yarn, three in this color, gray mix, I think is what it is. And three in a slightly darker gray. And I've had some ideas of like patterns that would use kind of equal amounts of worsted weight yarn in a sweater but none that like made me so excited that I actually cast on the yarn and so when I saw that this was the same color and that I would then so I'd have eight balls total um I'm holding it like a little baby <laughs> so eight now I have eight balls total which is enough to make a sweater in just one color and um I think even enough to make kind of like a really heavily cabled sweater, which is, I think my plan for these. And then for the three balls of the darker gray, um, I'm gonna check them again to see, cause I think this color was more ideal uh, for me, color season wise. Um, so I'm gonna check the darker gray skeins. If I'm not vibing with them, then I might de-stash them or, um, you know, three skeins um, will work well in like a sh color work shawl or um, or like a vest or something like that. So quite happy with my now sweaters quantity of this Patton's Classic Wool Merino. And if you've not encountered this yarn before, it is like really nice and soft. I, I highly recommend. I'll give you a little close up there. Yeah, I, I really like this yarn. I've knit um, mittens in this yarn in a white color or like fingerless mitts and they were they were great. I gave them away as a gift, but they were great. <laughs> um, next, I have this, uh, it's called, it's a Plymouth yarn and it's called Sea Isle Cotton and the color is Sugar Coral. And I have three skeins of it. They're caked up already. That's how they um, they came to me uh, in the auction. And I, uh, yeah, this I'm like very excited about about this color of like pinky peach. Um, this is a worsted weight yarn and it's a merino, it's 50-50 merino and cotton, which I've never uh, knit with a merino and cotton blend. I really want to try knitting for olives cotton merino, um, but this is a worsted weight, uh, whereas that is a fingering weight. So the based on the weight of the yarn, I should actually have enough yardage to make a sweater, probably like a closer fitting sweater which seems crazy from three balls. So I don't know, I don't know if I trust that, but supposedly I might have enough for a sweater's quantity. Um, don't have any specific plans, but just excited to try a merino cotton blend. Okay, next up is, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five six skeins of um, Plymouth Select uh, DK Merino Superwash. It's already got some like pet hair on it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a nice, I don't have like a ton of DK and sport weight in stash, so so it's great to like have options. The yardage for this with six skeins would be enough to be like the main color in a color work yoke sweater. Um, I'm not sure that I want to use this yarn to knit something for myself. The undertone on 
the yarn is a little cool for my um, skin tone. I have like a neutral to warm skin tone. So this might end up being a knit for Elliot or maybe something, um, a gift for someone else. Uh, yeah, we'll see, but it's 100% merino and it's super wash, which is great for gifting because then, you know, you don't have to give someone a job when you're <laughs> gifting them um, a knit item. Okay, so moving on now to sport weight yarns. I got quite a lot of sport weight <laughs> this time. Um, these are two balls of Knit Picks Brava. This was the only acrylic or at least 100% acrylic yarn. Um, and what really one of the only acrylics at all, I think, that I got. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Again, this was one that came with some other balls that I was more interested in. I'm definitely gonna hold on to it. I, I think the color works. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hold on and see. Uh, again, it might end up being a gift knit or it might end up uh, de-stashing. Did I say what the color was? Brava Sport in Camel Heather is the color on that. So yeah, I, I'm not mad at having some extra sport weight in my stash. Um, I feel like a lot of patterns right now are in sport weight and I feel lacking in that area. So next up, this was the like one kind of item I got in the, there was a live auction, a silent auction, and then there was also just what they called like a marketplace. So it was just, they had tables full of yarn and you could just go and buy like bagged yarn that was already priced. But this was the one thing that I did in the live auction. It was the first live auction I've ever <laughs> done, which was, it was like so low pressure and low stakes. So that was great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really fun. And it, it is uh, 10 balls of Debbie Bliss Baby Cashmere now. So certainly enough for um, a sweater for myself. Uh, the color is excellent. Uh, the color is is definitely what drew me to it. And then I saw that it was Baby Cashmere now and I went, I'd like to try that. So if you don't know, um, uh, Baby Cash Merino is 55% Merino wool, 33% microfiber, so it's like a acrylic blend, so it's washable, and 12% cashmere. Um, so I, yeah, I, I haven't decided um, what exact, what pattern, what sweater pattern I'm gonna knit. I have a couple that I'm considering, uh, but very excited for this like beautiful peachy sport weight yarn. Um, the color is 340022. I don't know if it has a like more fun name than that, but that is the, the color on the ball band. <laughs> okay, so keeping in the sport weight category, I got uh, two balls of nature spun sport weight yarn. And this is a brown sheep company uh, yarn. And the color is Bev's Bear. And it is 100% wool. Um, and it's in this like really nice chocolatey brown color. This, this does work for me. And then it came with this Plymouth Galway sport weight yarn in the color 29. And I'll be really curious to see on camera, but they look like a pretty close color match. If they're close enough, I might try to um, make something using these three together. Um, now that I'm looking at it in the light, one of them, no, that's not gonna work. But that's too bad. Oh well. Um, I have three brown sport weight again, 
happy to, to fill out my sport weight section of my stash. Um, I was hoping I could make a little cardigan for Elliot with those, but I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll work. Oh well. Um, here we have a Zarina Mosaico, Mosaico, and the company I think is Filatura di Crosa. And this one is really interesting. It's 100% wool, extra fine merino, and it's super wash. Um, another sport weight. And it is, I'm gonna get really close so you can see, but it's like three different colors, like a white, a brown, and a blue uh, marled together. And so it's consistent throughout. It's not color shifting as far as I can tell, but it, it it's like pre-marled. <laughs> So yeah, and it's this one is really soft. Like it's actually softer than the the cash merino. Yeah, it's the softest one here, I think. So not not exactly sure. Maybe just like a Sophie scarf or something, um, nice and simple, because there is only one ball. Um, but yeah. Next up is going to be our selection of fingering weight yarns. I got a little bundle that had um, four skeins of wolf oak snow all caked up already. Um, there's like a brown and cream mix and then a white and like a dusty pink and the colors are the pink and white is zero zero plus two eight and the brown one is 21 plus 30 and then there was also two balls of this um, uh, wolf oak tinned, so this is um, the color zero zero. So, just to put it in perspective, <laughs> the total amount that I paid for all of the yarn that I got has the same retail value pretty much of just these six skeins of wolf oak yarn. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty pleased <laughs> with um, with how I made out uh from this auction but um i'm thinking that i should use all of these kind of in maybe in like a fade or something of that nature um because i do think they like that's really cool that they have a little bit of a gradient um but i i just wolf oak is one of my absolute favorite Yarns, I have a Sophie scarf made with wolf oak tinned, and I love it so much. So I saw the wolf oak and I went, ah, I have to get this. Um, that was in the silent auction. And it also came with this one skein of Luet Gems, and this is 100% merino. Th these are um, these are all 100% merino. I don't think I mentioned that, and they're fingering weight. Um, yeah, Wolf Oak is known for their like really soft merino. I think it has like a special name, but I forget, Obis or something like that. Anyways, uh, Luet Gems, and this is in like, it's marled like white and a darker pink. So yeah, this one's probably the best color on me of all of those. This one, is good it's it's nice that it's a like a really creamy white um since i can't really do white or i'm not really supposed to do cream um more of a like a sandy or a buttery color looks better on me like this uh okay i also purchased a, this is a should be a sweaters quantity uh, based on the yardage 
of a Kobasi Haiku, which is a cotton, bamboo, and silk uh, co combination. Um, it's like a replacement sock yarn for people who can't do wool. And I have knit this before. I knit up a little like romper for Elliot and I did not hate the process of knitting it. Um, often cotton really bothers me because it has zero stretch, but this was totally fine um, to knit up and the color is, is very me. <laughs> yeah, so again, no plans for this yet, but um, the, the color spoke to me and I, I just, I took a leap. Um, the color is 101 uh, Seafoam. Uh, and I should mention that it, this also has nylon in it, 21% um, elastic nylon, which gives it that little stretch that I wouldn't say it's similar to knitting with wool. It's a very different uh, texture, um, but it doesn't have that stiffness that cotton has that makes cotton uh, difficult to work with for, for some of us. Um, okay, so I'll share this. I, I got quite a lot of sock yarn. So yeah, I'll just go on a, a sock yarn journey next. Uh, but I got this Tough Love sock uh, by Sweet Georgia. Um, it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's in the color spruce. So it's a really cool mix of like a spruce green but with a turquoise blue um, in there as well. So I'll be really interested to see how this knits up. I have a feeling that there'd be quite a lot of um, color pooling. Uh, so yeah, I might not knit like a garment out of it just because I'm having struggles with color pooling from hand dyed yarn in a uh, sweater that I'm currently knitting, but or a, a t I should say a t-shirt uh, that I'm currently knitting. But yeah, you just have to choose the right project for the right yarn. Um, next is this, it's a hand -dyed, another hand-dyed sock yarn, uh, Wild Star Fibers, and the base is Supernova Sock. The color is Copper Crush. So it's this cool, it's like a chocolatey brown, but with little hits of um, mauve, maybe is the right word, or pink. Um, I, there was a, just a, in the marketplace area of the auction, there was a whole section that just had like these caked, skeins of hand dyed yarn the majority of them were ten dollars um they're they're this is a full skein this isn't partial skein so yeah i just couldn't resist getting a bunch of skeins of hand dyed sock yarn for ten dollars each um and this one is another sock yarn uh lolo did it is the brand the base is everyday sock and the um, color is Starburst. So it's got a little, it's a little yarn barfy right now, um, but it's this really fun and colorful um, speckled, I guess, yeah, speckled yarn. So white with just a rainbow speckles, essentially. Um, just another enhancement to my sock yarn collection. Uh, here's another one by Lolo Did It. The base on this one is Low Original. And the color is Vertigo. But yeah, it's another sock yarn. Um, got the beautiful, like, turquoise, teal. What's this color? Turquoise, I would say. Uh, with purple speckles. Um, and yeah, just 
the the skeins of yarn being ten dollars really helped me to not agonize over it and just go with the things that brought me joy <laughs> so that one uh, definitely brought me joy this one does not have a ball band but it's uh, just the kind of very you can tell just by looking at it that it's um another hand dyed sock yarn and uh, it's similar to that last white one with speckles, um, except that I'd say the speckles are a little more muted on this one. I don't know that they're actually that muted, it's just in comparison they're more muted, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, more sock hair. Um, Oh, I forgot to share this one. This one's actually a sport weight um, and it came with my my Debbie Bliss um, baby cash merino. Uh, so it's a very highly variegated, multicolor, uh, hand dyed sport weight yarn. Uh, and I believe it's, yeah, it's a 100% super wash merino. The dyer is abstract fiber. The um, yarn base is Calder and the colorway is Seattle. So yeah, I, I would have loved to see this in the skein. With some of these, I'm like, I wonder what it looked like in the skein, but um, it's already caked up, which makes it easy to, to start working with. Uh, again, this one might not be something for me but um you gotta always have some some yarn in your stash that can be a gift for others this one i might just immediately de-stash <laughs> again it came in a in a pack um of some other yarn that i wanted the it's not it's certainly not me, and I just don't know if I know anyone that I think this is for, <laughs> but it is Lion Brand Yarn Sock Ease, and it's, yeah, just 75% wool, 25% nylon. The color is 206. Yeah, the, the green is very, I don't know, it's like guacamole -y. I don't know why I think of this as guacamole and not just avocado. <laughs> we'll see about this one. We'll see if it lasts the week. <laughs> um, a couple more uh, sock yarns. This is Patton's Croy Sock. I see this one a lot as like a great budget um, sock yarn. And so I wanted to give it a try. Uh, this nice, really neutral uh, taupe-y color grayish um which i'm so happy grayish is in my color palette <laughs> but the color is flax and yeah it's a 75 percent wool 25 percent nylon 50 gram ball and then this one is um uh lang jawol or yawol yawol twin I don't know but it's a, a like a pink and then it's gonna fade into a purple color um, and again a 50 gram ball of superwash is this composition yeah 75% wool 25% nylon uh, so yeah just a two like not a hand dyed but um, just, I would say like really nice standard basic sock yarns. Okay, so I have a couple more hand painted ones. These are not sock yarn. They are, um, th this is 100% wool. I don't think it's super wash. Uh, and it is by Koigu, K-O-I-G-U, Koigu Wool Designs. And it's a premium merino and it's a fingering weight. And I just love these colors, um, bright and happy, uh, blues and greens, um, definitely in my, in my color palette. So 
maybe this will be a Sophie scarf. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then another that is uh, hand dyed, um, but 100% merino, I believe. And this is Emma, Emma's yarn. Uh, crazy, oh, you know, super silky is the base, and it's 80% merino and 20% silk, and the color is it's casual. And ah, I don't even know how I would describe this. It's like a somewhere between like a light gray and a steely blue, and then it has speckles of copper and darker gray or dark blue in it but it's nice and it's like really shiny because of the silk um it gives it such a such a pretty sheen that works i think really well with the color so yeah i'm thinking i might make a tank out of this um i think the color works for me the camera will tell all <laughs> um, okay, and that was all my fingering weights that I got, and now we can move on to the lace weight. I got maybe a little bit too much lace weight yarn, but yeah, whatever. So this is Cascade Yarns Kid Seta, and it's 70% uh, uh, mohair and 30% silk, and I don't like it. It is scratchy. Um, that was the one issue with this yarn auction is everything was packaged in like really crinkly plastic, which is why I took it all out <laughs> before showing you, but you couldn't squish the yarn. And I was like, I need to just squish it. But luckily I got, I think I got pretty lucky on everything. This is the only one where I'm just like, that texture is bad. So I'm holding on to it now for now, just like in case there's some, little thing that I want to use it in. I, I don't know why, but I'm just thinking like like a doll closer. Um, you know, although the like really realistic, I forget the name of the person who does, is it Claire Garland or something? Who does all the really realistic animal like stuffy knits. And oftentimes she'll like marl a mohair with um, fingering weight to get like different kind of color gradations. So I'm thinking I might hold on to it just in case. And then if I ever kind of run out of room in my stash, then that one will go. Um, this one is Super Kid uh, by Ornagi Villati. Um, I believe this is a discontinued one. Some of these are discontinued. I sh probably should have mentioned which ones, but honestly, I've forgotten. And this is 50% mohair and 50% nylon, and the color is 31. And again, I, it's nylon, which is fine. It's, I, I prefer a silk mohair, but this one's actually, it's soft enough. It's not like crazy soft. Um, but again, I'm just gonna hold on to it just in case something comes up where I'm like, oh, it'd be really great to have a, an extra mohair. I feel like I always use all my mohair. So yeah, I'll keep these two for now. Okay, and now I have the mohair that I bought purposefully. <laughs> and this is Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And it is... This one's a mohair silk blend. I just don't remember the exact. Why does it not say? Oh, 70% mohair and 30% silk. And the colorway on this is called Sweet. And I like that name. It's like candy, <laughs> candy colored. And I have five of them, um, which should be enough to pair with uh, like a fingering or, or other yarn. Uh, for a sweater. I'm thinking about pairing this with my La Vienna May, I forget if it's Alex or Felix, um, to knit a ranunculus. That's my, that's my thought as of now. 
Um, the, I, di I didn't bring that yarn, but it matches really nicely, so we'll see. I probably should, should have turned off the fan. I hope you haven't been hearing it <laughs> this whole time, going, why won't you turn off the fan? Uh, we're almost done. Um, I got this one skein of Shibui Knits in the color... Oh, the yarn is reed and the color is poppy. And this is like th my orange. This is like the orangest I can wear. Um, so I was quite pleased, again, to just be able to compare my swatch in person instead of trying to guess online if uh, it's gonna be like true to color. Um, but there is also, there's just one of these. So I'm thinking I might do kind of like a lacy bandana or scarf something along those lines. I have never knit with 100% linen, which is what this is. So that will be an experience. Um, but yeah, uh, and I know Shibui, I think has gone out of business recently. So I'm not anticipating that I'll be able to find more of that. So I'm just gonna choose a small project. And then we have this, this bad boy. This is Lisa Sousa Knitwear and Dye Works. Um, and it's baby alpaca lace in the color deep teal. And it's 100% baby alpaca. And it's six ounces. I don't really have a reference for how much that is, um, but it's 1,500 yards. <laughs> which is a lot of yards um, for one skein. But yeah, it's a, it's a lace weight. It looks like it's maybe really loosely plied. I hope that's not annoying. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'll make, but I feel like I got a lot in this like turquoisey on this one too which I probably, before I got my colors done, I probably would not have uh, picked these yarns out specifically, but they do make me really happy when I look at them. So I'm glad. Um, and then I have two, this is like a skein and, and some additional. I put it all in a bag because <clears throat> there's a bunch of little balls of this. I don't know if it had if it got kind of chomped on by some bugs or what, but this one's a lot of little balls. Um, and it is Stunning String Studio Lavish Lace. And it's 100% superwash merino. And there are 925 yards in a 100 gram skein. The color on it is, I want to say lavender dust. Oh, violet dust. So it's I would call it, I don't know, like almost looks more like an undyed, but it does have an undertone of purple. Um, I just think it's such a beautiful natural color. So I've got quite a bit of that one as well. Lace weight yarns, we've got a lot of yardage. <laughs> uh, and then here's my last little ball that I'm sharing with you. This is Calland Yarns. Uh, Classic 2, I believe, is the is the yarn base. Uh, it's another hand-painted or a hand-dyed, and it is the color Taipan, and it says it's hand-dyed in Australia. And this one's really interesting. It's a brown yarn, but again, kind of like, not well, I guess not really like that one, but similar to this, it's got some bits that are more pink and some that are more yellow. So I'm thinking about potentially pairing, I found like a sweater, I forget what it's called, of course, because I'm filming, so. <laughs> but, or, or maybe it's a, a like a t-shirt and it's knit in lace weight, which I don't, I don't know if I wanna go down that path. 
I, I'm thinking I might want to hold the lace weight double, <laughs> but if I do decide to just knit it as lace weight, um, I was thinking this and then stripes of, of um, this one would look really cool. And it's like a kind of nice open breezy striped uh, tee, summer tee. And yeah, I thought that that would be a really nice combination. Okay, well, you've seen it all. $200 worth of auction yarn. Um, if you're curious about the knitting guild that put uh, this on, it is the Cam Camellia City Stockinettes. And yeah, I'm thinking about joining the guild, but they have meetings on weeknights, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, yep, it was really fun. If you're in the like, Sacramento general area. I would look out for this next year. There was so much yarn there. It was really cool. I of course forgot to take video. I should have like, you know, done a sweep, but they had all these, they had like four or five different silent auctions set up that closed at different times um, and two sessions of live auction. So if you could only come to one part or the other, then um, you could still participate and um, get some some of the items. I am going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I wish you could be here to squish all of this yarn with me. I brought it home and Joel was like, you didn't. And I was like, oh, I did. <laughs> so... My stash has re-expanded. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.